Greetings, ladies and mandogens, and welcome to this narration of the book Introduction to Human Biology, taken from Reddit with the author's approval. If you're new to the story, there is a link down below with the playlist. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 8 Soft, synthetic piano music started playing as Laura slept. Small, high-pitched notes reverberated, almost creating bubbles of electronic sound. The crystal clear sound emanating from the alarm that she had set up the night prior began to stir her from her slumber. Then, with a deafening cacophony, a loud siren erupted, changing the overall feel of the song. As the siren wound down, the electronic notes came back, followed by some drums. Finally, a voice could be discerned behind all the heavy instruments. Gedaldled that, there, Schmerz and Kent. Heavy and coarse, the voice sang the lyrics harshly, with little to no emotion. Laura's eyes opened begrudgingly, wishing that she had gotten a bit more rest. The song continued on, regardless of Laura's wishes. One fur dust the hot vibrant. A bit more life in the lyrics could be heard, slightly more on the side of anger or frustration. She moved her head, flexing her neck gently, and pushed herself up. Ich werf in Licht. A yawn escaped as she adjusted herself to a sitting position. She rotated her head clockwise, the same with both of her wrists. The tendons and joints stretched, making small, audible pumps. Then mein Gesicht, mein Heber, strain. Chills made their way down Laura's spine in the form of a shiver, a frisson as to all the familiar lyrics made themselves heard, dredging up powerful emotions. Feuer frei! The song erupted into a loud mix of drums, guitar, and electronic music. The initial loud siren almost made its return, although not drowning out every other instrument this time. Bang! Bang! She waited for the refrain to kick in before shutting off the alarm. Fully woken up now, she started her morning routine. Fetching her bag, she opened it and took out a toothbrush, using the refillable bottle of water. She dipped it in and applied a small, dot-sized amount of toothpaste, brushing her teeth. Rinsing it out, she then grabbed one of the remaining four protein bars that she had left from Earth. She told herself to remember to grab extra provisions to keep in her room. If Jean-Francois's cooking venture held any promise, she would likely try and copy that. Chewing on a protein bar, she changed her clothes and readied herself for glass, having taken a bath the night before. At least most aliens had heard of hygiene, she thought, having been pleased at finding a bath-like structure attached to her room. She made her way towards the class with ten minutes to spare, and was delighted to find four human-sized seats. Looking over a laptop, this class was supposed to delve on diplomacy and was taught by a teacher they hadn't yet had, a Mrs. Muldron. A few students walked past her and took their seats, mostly ignoring her. She wished she could be slightly more social, better able to interact with other species, but she was shy. Perhaps awkward was a better word than shy. She did have friends, after all. But how to approach a completely foreign species? What did they have in common? Did they even have small talk? Class started to fill up slowly, but surely as she pondered those questions in her head, chin resting inside her palm, her hand touched her shoulder and she looked up to see Izumi. Ah, good morning, announced Laura. Good morning as well, replied Izumi. Sleep well. As much as one can be expected. I think I earned a few bruises from the steel suit exercise we did, however. Laura looked at her hands, a few bruises present on the palm of her hands from gripping the controls tightly. Izumi nodded in agreement. I was only watching from above, but I expected it must have been rough, moving fast and suddenly like you did. I wonder how the boys fared. As if on cue, Barry and Jean-Francois entered the classroom, amongst the last group of students to do so, taking their place behind the girls. Speak of the devil, they also look worse for wear, remarked Laura. Isn't it warm? Why is Barry wearing a long-sleeved shirt with a hood? Asked Izumi questioningly, which made Laura notice how Barry had a few bruises and scratches on his face. It appeared that the steel suit match had left its mark on the boys as well. Laura did a double take when she looked at Barry's hoodie more closely. She blinked twice to try and tell herself that she had not seen correctly, but the image stayed the same. She facepalmed and muttered something to herself about stupid Americans. 
I know the aliens can't read it, but why did this idiot bring a hoodie with thick thighs save lives on the goddamn space voyage? The student stopped talking as the teacher closed the door, signaling that class would be beginning soon. Mrs. Muldron bent her tentacles together, like someone interlacing their fingers. Hello, class. I see some new faces in the room. Excellent. I have been anxiously and nervously expecting you. Let me introduce myself to those who are new. I'm Mrs. Muldron, and I teach natural sciences and diplomacy. As a matter of fact, just a few days ago, we had a biology class where you were our main subject. The human students were a bit surprised at this. Laura lifted a hand to ask a question. Mrs. Muldron pointed at her with one of her eight tentacles. What do you mean by that? Well, you were a newly discovered species, the first one in nearly 400 years. Everyone was quite curious about you. It was important to try and glean some details of what your species is like, for how we interact with you. We had some basic information provided by your internet, but much of it was unreliable and without sources. One of the students lifted her appendage, wishing to speak. Once granted, she quickly uttered, It's been exactly 362 years since the first contact encounter. Thank you, Zargiel. I must say that I'm disappointed that Mr. Florge broached the subject matter of your history first and in a manner that he did. However, we can now do it the right way, examining what we have in common instead of what makes humans different. How can we do that? asked Jean-Francois. Perhaps you four could clarify a few things for us. I browsed your internet briefly, trying to find pertinent information, but many articles seem to contradict each other, so I only use those that seem to be the most reliable in previous class. Mrs. Maldron paused for a moment before resuming. I had initially thought to simply make your internet available to all students, but some of the contents were uh, rather distasteful nature. So much so that I had to report it to the education board, and they have since moved it under a level 3 quarantine. She shivered momentarily after remembering her experiences. What is a level 3 quarantine? Mary asked, quite curious. It's to prevent someone from coming across it by accident. A level 3 quarantine necessitates a special permit, which can be granted after passing a written test, in order to make sure that the written material will not traumatize the reader. Well, I always knew the internet was toxic cesspool of depravity, but it had never dawned on me that it would be regarded as that bad, Barry laughed as he said it. Izumi seemed to take this as not quite as well as the others. I hope they don't judge us too harshly for this. Mrs. Malter became apologetic. No, no, ju judgment is not being done. It is simply what is we surprised your species with a visit, and they welcomed us immediately with open arms, helping the wounded from the accidental crash on their planet. First contact with other species usually takes much longer, giving them time to cleanse away all documents that shine a bad light in them before sharing their information and databases with us. Today's class was supposed to be about history, one of the subjects under the umbrella of diplomacy. It is important to know the history of a species in order to know how to conduct good diplomacy. It also helps in better understanding the culture and personality of a species. I think just about everyone would like to know more about humans, if I'm not mistaken. The Claws voiced their agreement. That might be a bit hard to do. Humans aren't united like many of you seem to be. Um, we'll uh, still divide it across many states that each have their own culture, Laura stated. That is understandable. We are looking for shared human traits and preferences that can apply to all humans. What about governing systems? Divided there too. Um, a large amount of us have democracies, a few have oligarchies, others communism, and even fewer have monarchies. Jean-Francois shrugged as he said so. Very interesting. We also vary by species. Mine also uses an oligarchy. But we have a fair share of monarchies and technocracies across the spectrum of the other species. Mrs. Maldrum smiled as she descanted. What kind of government do you have in your own tribes? Asked one of the students. We're all under democracies, although Barry's country would almost be considered an oligarchy. Laura said deadpan. Barry's obvious facial disagreement spoke volumes. So anyone at all can become your leader, continued the student who had asked the question. Well, um... Yes and no. No one's ever won without being part of one of the main parties. You need money to run a campaign, connections to get your name known, and etc., replied Barry, trying to save face for his country. The class was silent for a moment until another student asked a question. Do humans have any sort of rituals, for example, before sleeping? My species always offers a prayer to the creators. 
Well, uh, most would be religious in nature, I think. Like praying or baptism, right guys? Barry looked at the others for advice. At the mention of religion, the alien female appeared to have shocked reaction, but it quickly changed into one of excited joy. Ah, there we go. The Lumiel also have a belief system in the supernatural, believing that a precursor species has seeded all known life in the universe. So far, there were only ones with such a trait. The teacher seemed pleased to find some common ground, however archaic it was. No, I can't wait to tell my people about you. We will make a pilgrimage to your home world as soon as possible. We've not had others to speak of theology with for eons. Oh no. What have we done? Are we responsible for the religious walls that may follow? Laura's heart sank in her stomach, and she felt sick to her core. This is like when the Catholics discovered the new world, except space Jehovah's Witnesses would find Earth. Well, aside from that, cultural rituals do exist, I suppose. Things like handshaking or, or uh, birthdays. Maybe bowing instead of handshaking in some countries, added Jean Francois, trying to steer the conversation away from religion. Taking shoes off before entering a house, funerals, eating together, dating. We've got many rituals when we think about it, added Izubi, piggybacking on Jean Francois's train of thought. What do you mean by ceremony for the dead? asked Mrs. Moulton with a genuine touch of confusion. Funeral, um, yeah, you know, burial, cremation, those types of things. What do you do when someone dies? questioned Jean Francois. We process the body, of course. It is the most efficient thing to do, said Mrs. Moulton, without an ounce of warmth. Wait, what do you mean by process? Barry's eyebrows raised as he asked the question. We use it as a protein for the carnival species diet, of course. We've been eating people. Oh, God, I think I'm going to be sick. Jean Francois's face contorted, and he began taking short, sharp breaths. Don't those species have farms for raising livestock? Laura seemed flabbergasted by the prospect of eating a sapient creatures as well. Naturally, but we aren't always close to one of those worlds. We do synthesize the majority of the protein, but this helps us save some of that, stated Mrs. Muldron. Yeah, that's gonna be enough for me. Humans don't eat sapient species, Barry's thought of dolphins and squids, remembering that those are highly intelligent. The vast majority of us don't anyways. Barry looked at the class and saw Lissana giving him a wink. Well, this has been quite informative, but we're going a bit off topic now. What about social dynamics? How are human communities and your relations with your progenitors? You know, uh, once again, that's going to be very a lot. Uh, some humans are very close to the parents. Others break off as soon as they can. Initially, most couples that have children do so willingly. It can happen accidentally, however, but sometimes they end up separating from each other due to different reasons. Where I'm from, the most common arrangement tends to be a male and a female with two children. As far as communities, you buy or rent a house from a neighborhood that you like or can afford, preferably not too far from work or other amenities. Barry had taken over Jean-Francois's spot as the latter had left the room quite urgently mere moments ago. The child stays with the parents for how long? asked the luminal student. Izumi answered it. Traditionally, it's up to 18 years old or completion of secondary studies. Some may spend their entire lives in their parents' home, however. We call those hikikomoris in my language. The students murmured amongst themselves, shocked at how long children stayed with their parents. They spend nearly 20 years learning and under their parents' wing. It would drive me mad. That probably explains why they only have two offspring if they stay for that long. Mrs. Muldron had managed to bring back the relative calm raising her tentacles and slowly bringing them down. You have strong family ties then, someone like the Enoir, where offspring often follow their family for half of their life before making their own family. Laura addressed Mrs. Muldron. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're looking for is more similar to etiquette. Ah, customary code of polite behavior. That would do quite nicely. There is a general human etiquette. It'd be a very small list as many things change from one culture to another. In general, don't be rude, don't stare, provide assistance if it is required. It is polite to face the person that you are talking to. Humans don't do enjoy some personal space when possible. It's considered rude to not offer a guest refreshments. Things like that. But honestly, seeing as you're aliens and not humans, I'm not sure how many of those that we'd hold you accountable to. Laura shrugged her shoulders, not knowing how to solve this issue without dealing with humans. This may be a bit more difficult than I anticipated. All right, 
Let's take a small recess and reconvene in 72 minutes. Students stood up in order to leave the classroom when, without warning, an explosion knocked everyone down. The shockwave reverberated throughout the station. An alarm began shouting, and everyone panicked. End of chapter. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Ashtraya the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.